No, but this see it, 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 I did a class this that it didn't after this problem on there was no problem with my class on. I can guarantee you that. Come on, that's not right now. Yeah. yeah, because the same thing happened. The same thing happened in this cop cut. Okay, so what, what I can do is, what I can do is, uh, I'll definitely, I can record and send it to you. In fire video. I can Maybe I can't, yeah, just let me know. Maybe I can't do it by the working as it's very difficult. But I can record and send it to fire video. Not completely one. That is you know, I can but I actually did the whole class. No, because it happened the first time I kept in the In the full class, I logged into the video. No, no, yesterday it was fine. Yesterday it was fine. Even today, my first class was fine. I keep logging into the video. Okay. Yeah, so they did that because of this happened. Same thing happened. So just talk and then I'll start class. Sorry. Good afternoon everyone, welcome to Unacademy where you can crack all new PG exams with us with our quality content and uh, have a great learning experience. So guys, let's crack new PG together. A little about me, I'm Dr. Sasha Manin Remedius. I've done my MBBS from Father Mula Medical College, Mangalo. My MD in uh, anesthesia from Father Mula Medical College, Mangalo. I have two publications and one paper presentation in the field of anesthesia. And I have been working and teaching in Bangalore for the past two and a half years. Now, coming to the topic, uh, today's topic is anesthesia, breathing systems, uh, part two, I have taken this, uh, I am taking this uh, second part right now and uh, sorry for the slight delay because uh, there was some technical issue which is resolved right now. So I'll be taking your second part right now, which is the anesthesia breathing system, part two. Uh, I'll take the second part first, and then if there is time, we can uh, revise the first part. So now a little about Unacademy. It's uh, one of India's largest online learning platform where you can get plus subscription and access to live uh, unlimited live and recorded courses and all this is from India's uh, best educators. Now, um, 
these are some of our top educators uh, dr nikita nanwani dr mohammad azam dr kuti sharma and dr divish mishra dr nikita nanwani is also a neat pg mentor for radiology as well as mnemonics and concept focusing on, on certain must know topics which encompass all subjects so mnemonics is kind of it, it is important it is very, it can be very useful for you all for me it wasn't very helpful as i cannot some of that i get confused but for those of you who mnemonics works uh, who is suitable i suggest you all make your own mnemonics as it will be very helpful for you all and of course you all can it, it, it it's something good now these are some of the courses that are offered so as you can see there are a variety of courses on your screen uh i mean variety of courses as well as so many subjects right i know your pg is not easy there is a lot to cover you all have a lot to cover and there is a lot of uh, it's not easy but we are here to help you all now during mbbs to certain uh, subjects like anesthesia psychiatry radiology dermatology these are little difficult subjects in the sense uh, these were known as the smaller so called smaller subjects smaller in the sense from the point of view that you didn't have to get into detail for these subjects right over here too you don't have to go these are super special these are tough subjects you don't have to go into that much detail into these subjects but you need to know some detail to be able to answer the questions for neat pg secondly these topics are allotted 11 marks each these 11 marks are easy to score easy marks for you all because like in mbbs where you all did not have to go into detail over here too they will not go into that much detail to give you all the questions okay it will not be that much in detail to give you all the questions but but you all cannot it's very difficult to answer these questions without having some background information on these subjects so you all need to be a little prepared for these subjects on the basic topics of these subjects now your your courses like physiology anatomy pharmacology etc these are courses which uh, you know 44 marks each are allotted to these subjects and these are very vast subjects so these subjects might take you know they will take uh, they can ask you anything from anywhere for these subjects these are some of the ongoing courses on our platform course on neurophysiology gi surgery cardiovascular thoracic surgery capsule on larynx respiratory system pathology Now coming to subscription part of it. So as you can see on the screen, there are five types of subscriptions, right? And uh, if th those of you who are giving your exams this month, I I think the six months should suffice for you. For the rest of you, the twelve and the twenty-four months should be good. Uh, there's no harm in wasting one year. It is actually good to take that time off. I did it and I regret it. Nobody will ask you how long you took to clear PG. and why did you take so long why did you drop your nobody at the end of the day is worried about such things once you have your degree in your hand so this this duration of time also helps you so it also gives you an insight into subjects that you might like or might not right so there are certain subjects you might enjoy certain subjects you might not enjoy uh and you might have made up your mind okay i want this particular subject but when you study you might actually realize you don't enjoy studying the subject it's not practical i do agree we're not doing the practical part but remember the theoretical part of your subject too is very important right so you cannot decide based on practicals so once you read you realize your scope you know how much you need to study what you need to do extra and all that so your 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 affection for the subjects can change in this one or two years it's important because you are going to be choosing this for the rest of your life you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life so you'll better do you'll need to do something that you enjoy right so like i said 12 uh so use my code like you can see at the bottom of the screen to avail the 10% discount so over here as you can see this is a 10% discount the discount is applicable on all the subscriptions and as you can see over here too this is my code sashg please avail the 10% discount you can avail a 10% discount if you use my code so as you can see over here okay the various codes
So now we will proceed with class. So the classification of the breathing systems. So it is classified based on the function uh, by function system and based on classification <coughs> by equipment. So as you can see, so now coming to the classification by function. So the DRIPS classification, it is based on rebreathing. So DRIPS classification is based on rebreathing and the presence or absence of reservoir, carbon dioxide absorption and directional valves. So it is based on rebreathing, the presence or absence of a reservoir, carbon dioxide absorption and directional valves. <coughs> well, so one rebreathing, rebreathing, two on the presence or absence of a reservoir bag, three based on carbon dioxide absorption, and four based on unidirectional valves. So, uh, so they are divided into basically five categories. Uh, so, based on the reservoir bag, presence or absence of a reservoir bag, rebreathing. Absorber to remove uh, carbon dioxide and directional valves. So based on these four, it is based, right? So it uh, consists of the insufflation system, open system, uh, semi-open type, semi-closed type, and closed system. Okay. So in the insufflation system, uh, so there's insufflation, open type, semi-open type, uh, semi-closed type, and closed type. So, in sufflation system, the gases are delivered. In the insufflation system, gases are delivered directly to the patient's airway. There is no reservoir bag, no uh, valves, unidirectional, no directional valves, no carbon dioxide method um, absorber. It is a open drop method. Okay, so basically, patient inhales only the mixture delivered by the anesthesia. Machine. So patient inhales only the mixture delivered by anesthesia. Okay, so it inhales only the mixture de delivered by the anesthesia machine. Valves direct each exhaled breath into atmosphere. And a reservoir bag may or may not be present. It is not present. Rebreathing is minimal and there is no carbon dioxide absorption. Okay. So, the exhaled gas goes to atmosphere. Because there is no carbon dioxide absorption. Open type. Gases are directed to the patient from anesthesia machine. And valves direct the exhaled gases to atmosphere. I am sorry, in the insufflation system, gases are delivered directly to the patient airway. Di directly to the patient airway by the anesthesia machine. Okay. In the open type, gases are delivered to pa patient from the anesthesia machine and valves direct the exhaled gases to the atmosphere. Uh, rebreathing is minimal. A reservoir bag may or may not be present. So, a reservoir bag. Reservoir bag is plus or minus, may or may not be, uh, reservoir bag may or may not be present. Rebreathing is minimal, no carbon dioxide absorption. The 
rebreathing is minimal because there are non rebreathing valves so rebreathing is minimal no carbon dioxide absorption yeah so this includes systems used with intermittent flow anesthesia machines and non rebreathing system so it is used with the this open type is used with intermittent uh, flow machine systems with and systems with non rebreathing valves basically like your ambu bag and all that right it has a non rebreathing valve now semi open type uh, the gases a mixing of inspired and expired gases occur and rebreathing depends on fresh gas flow so in semi open type the exhaled gases uh, flow out of the system and to the inspiratory line of the apparatus so there is mixing of inspired and expired gases there is uh, no uh, no absorption of carbon dioxide rebreathing uh, depends on fresh gas flow it depends on rebreathing depends on fresh gas flow and a reservoir bag and a and a directional valve are optional so reservoir bag So this is basically a maple seed, a maple seed system. Okay. Now the semi-closed uh, type, semi-closed type, part of the exhaled gases go to the atmosphere. Part of it gets mixed with the inspired bad gases, and rebreathed carbon dioxide absorber is present. Okay. Directional. So there are also directional valves. and reservoir bag are present okay these are present so in closed system complete rebreathing of uh, expired gas uh, carbon dioxide absorber is present so in the closed system there is complete rebreathing of expired gas and carbon dioxide absorber reservoir bag and directional valves are present so then there were other other systems too i'll just write it down here so then there was the classification of function one is by drips ekenoff and vandal that was the drips classification then there was moyer so moyer said Moyer said that based on the presence or absence of reservoir bag and rebreathing, again same thing. Uh, it was similar. Okay, so he also classified as it as open, semi-open, semi-closed, right? And closed. So an open there was no reservoir or rebreathing. Semi-closed had reservoir but no rebreathing. Uh, sorry, semi-open, semi-closed had reservoir and partial rebreathing, and closed had complete rebreathing. Then Colin also classified as um, Describe this set of uh, open, uh, closed, semi open, etc. Okay, so all those are not required. Now we will move on to Mapleton system. Okay, so now based on the unidirectional flow or di bidirectional flow unidirectional flow can be with circle system or non rebreathing valves unidirect with circle system with absorber bidirectional flow flow uh, is seen with the efferent reservoir system that is your maples in a b c and lac system which is a modification of maples in a enclosed afferent reservoir system is millers and efferent reservoir system is d F and Bain system, Combi uh, combined system that is combined afferent and efferent 
reservoir is Humphrey ADE. So breathing system without carbon dioxide absorber. So unidirectional flow, non-rebreathing system. They make use of non-rebreathing valves to prevent rebreathing. So fresh gas flow will be equivalent to the minute ventilation. Though it satisfies all the four essential requirements, it is not very popular because fresh gas flow has to be constantly adjusted and is not economical. There is no humidification of inspired gases and there is no conservation of heat. The valve is bulky and has to be placed close to the patient. Malfunctioning of the valve can occur due to condensation of moisture. It can be noisy at times and cleaning and sterilization is becomes difficult. So this valve is bulky, this non breathing, it has to be placed close to the patient. Malfunctioning can occur due to condensation and moisture. Uh, it can be noisy at times and cleaning and sterilization is can be pretty difficult. So bidirectional flow, like uh, bidirectional flow example is water canister. Now water canister is basically Well, are still not able. Okay, so, so, okay. so bidirectional flow is basically water scanister. They're, these are obsolete in current. So water scanister is obsolete in current practice right now. Now coming to Mapleson system. So in 1954, on the advice of William Mushin, Mapleson reported on functional analysis of breathing systems. Now this was Mapleson. So Mapleson A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, F, G is fresh gas flow and P is to the patient. So for better understanding of functional analysis, they have been classified as afferent reservoir system, enclosed afferent reservoir system, efferent reservoir system and combined System. The efficiency of a system is determined in terms of carbon dioxide elimination and fresh gas flow utilization. So this you have to know. So they have been classified as afferent uh, reservoir system, enclosed efferent reservoir system, efferent efferent uh, reservoir uh, system, combined system and the efficiency of the system is determined in terms of carbon dioxide elimination and fresh gas flow utilization. So the afferent limb is the part of the breathing system. So it is part of the breathing system that delivers the fresh gas from the machine to the patient. So from the machine to the patient, 
fresh gas flow that is delivered is known as the acrid limb. If the reservoir is placed in this limb as in maple syrup A, B, C and lac system, they are called as acrid reservoir system. So fresh gas flow is coming as you can see. Fresh gas flow is coming from the So it is coming from the machine FG that is your FG that is your fresh gas flow is coming from the it is coming from the so it is coming from the machine this is from the machine okay and the reservoir is placed in the path from the machine to the patient it is coming so it is placed placed in that path so uh, is a part of the breathing system so the afferent limb is a part of the breathing system which delivers the fresh gas from the machine to the patient if the reservoir is placed in this limb they are called as afferent reservoir so a b c and lac system so see here a b so fresh gas flow is coming from the it is still placed before the where the fresh gas is coming c again reservoir and e okay there is no reservoir bag in e but yes sorry lac system lac system i'll discuss it with you okay i'll draw the diagram here. now efferent limb is that part of the breathing system which carries the expired gas from the patient and vents it to the atmosphere through the expiratory valve port if the reservoir is placed in this limb as in maples in def and bain system they are called the efferent reservoir so the afferent is if the reservoir is placed in the limb same as that which delivers fresh gas from the machine to the patient it is known as afferent uh, so basically from machine to patient if the reservoir bag is in over here it is known as afferent and efferent is uh, the expired gas from the patient is vented to the so patient to atmosphere through an expiratory valve it is vented to atmosphere if the reservoir is placed in this limb so the reservoir bag will be between the patient and the atmosphere so like you see in veins so in uh, maples in in maples in d there is a pop off valve which vents it to the atmosphere so the fresh gas flow comes here the the exhaled gas goes into the reservoir gets vented to the atmosphere so it is placed here d e the fresh gas flow is directly vented to the atmosphere there is no reservoir bag and f it is vented to the this reservoir bag for spontaneous ventilation in in the order of efficiency so for spontaneously ventilated patient will push all these gases towards the uh, apl valve uh, reversing the direction of flow of gases so uh, if the fresh gas flow is high enough it will force the dead space gas also out if the fresh gas flow is not high enough if it is intermediate then some dead space gas will be retained in the system and if the fresh gas flow is low only more alveolar gas will be retained in the system so if the fresh gas flow uh, is intermediate some dead space gas will be retained however if the fresh gas flow is low alveolar more alveolar gas will be retained right because the fresh gas is pushing the gases back now at the start of inspiration now when this was exhalation okay now there is a mixture of gases within this so now when inspiration comes the first gas to be inhaled from from dead space between the patient and the apl valve so the, the so now depending on the flow now suppose uh, now the first gas now alveolar gas is all gone out dead space gas depending on the flow might or might not have gone out so the first gas at the start of inspiration will be your so at the start of inspiration first gas will be your dead space
okay uh, the next gas will be either alveolar gas if so the next will be either alveolar so there will be some dead space gas even between the patient and the apl valve right that so that once the alveolar gas is exhaled and as it is going here so first gas will be the dead space gas the second will be the the second gas depending on the flow will be either alveolar gas if the fresh gas flow is low or it it can be the dead space gas if the fresh gas flow was intermediate or it can be fresh fresh gas flow if the uh, fresh gas flow was high so in the next either can be so the initial dead space gas and this the second part can be uh, inspiration second part can be either of these three depending on the fresh gas flow so change in the respiratory pattern have little effect on the rebreathing now with the classic meggel system uh, they found that rebreathing when fresh gas flow is reduced to, so rebreathing occurred when fresh gas flow was reduced from 256 to 82 so if fresh gas flow is reduced to 56 to 82 ml per kg per minute uh, fresh gas flow begins okay so when fresh gas flow is reduced to this much rebreathing will be, will begin so fresh gas flow of 51 to 85 is recommended ml per kg per minute so this is this is the recommended fresh gas flow to prevent rebreathing So to prevent rebreathing, fresh gas flow should be equal to the minute ventilation ideally. So fresh gas flow of 70 ml per kg per minute is recommended. Like I said, 51 to 85, basically 51 to 85, uh, around 70, an extreme, extremely efficient system for spontaneous ventilation. Now coming to your lax modification. Okay. So your lax modification. I'm sorry control ventilation that is spontaneous now for control ventilation these are inefficient more than 20 liter per minute is required of fresh gas flow is required for carbon dioxide elimination this system cannot be used in patients less than 30 kgs so during uh, controlled assisted ventilation during exhalation when there is exhalation the pressure in the system will remain low and no gas will so during exhalation no gas will uh, escape through the this is uh, late inspiration. Sorry. Okay. So during controlled or assisted uh, ventilation. So this is at the start of inspiration gases in the tubing flow to the patient so at the start of inspiration so whenever at the start of uh, inspiration all the gases in the tubing flow to the patient because alveolar gas occupies the dead space nearest to the patient it will be inhaled first as the pressure in the system rises, the APL valve opens so that the gas both exits through APL valve and flows to the patient. When all the exhaled gas has been driven from the tube, fresh gas fills the tube. Okay, that is here. So, during exhalation, the pressure in the system will be extremely low and no gas will ex escape through the 
APL valve unless the bag becomes distended. So there will be no gas escaping unless the uh, there will be no gas. So this is your exhalation. There will be no gas escaping until the bag becomes fully uh, distended. So the APL valve will not open all the exhaled gases both dead space alveolar so the alveolar dead space gas remain in the corrugated tubing and the alveolar gas remains nearest to the patient okay so alveolar gas will remain nearest to the patient now at the start of uh, inspiration at the start of inspiration gases in the tubing so at the start of inspiration, gases in the tubing will flow to the patient because the alveolar gas occupies the space nearest to the patient, it will be inhaled first. So first to go will be your alveolar gas. This is your early. Both these are inspiration. So first, so this is exhalation, all the gases in the tubing. At the beginning of uh, inhalation will be the alveolar gas. Uh, because alveolar gas occupies the place nearest to the patient, as the pressure in the system rises, APL valve will open uh, because the bag is distended. So, APL valve will open. The gas exits through the APL valve as well as flows to the patient. When all the exhaled gas has been driven from the tube, so all the exhaled gas has left the tube, fresh gas will start filling the tube. So, only after all the exhaled gas has left the tube, fresh gas will start filling the tube. But some fresh gas enters the patient and some is vented through the valve. So only when all this exhaled gas is gone from the tube, then only the fresh gas will enter. So during control ventilation, there is a lot of rebreathing occurring, right? It is taking very long for the fresh gas flow to enter the tube. Rebreathing occurring and there is a lot of wastage of fresh gas also. Rebreathing plus venting of fresh gas flow occurs. Okay, so this can be efficient only if the expiratory phase is prolonged, right? So that there can be the bag fills fully, the valve opens, gases are exhaled only if the expiratory phase is prolonged. But so it is not logical to use this for controlled ventilation because of the rebreathing. Now, lax system is basically a coaxial Naproxen tube. Uh, so, this is to the patient. So, there is a coaxial limb. Uh, the outer tube is 30 mm in diameter. The inner tube is 14 mm. The APL valve over here is placed near the patient end. Okay, so, this could be more efficient for controlled ventilation. So, the APL valve was placed near the patient end connected by an inner tube. So, how do you test for leaks in McGill's and uh, LAC system? McGill's tested for leaks by occluding the patient end and closing the valve and pressurizing the system. Open the valve will confirm proper functioning of the component. In addition, the user or patient should breathe through the system to rule out block. So, breathing through the system is also advisable to rule out any blockage. Now, uh, LAX uh, tested same as Maples in A with the testing integrity of inner tube. The ET tube is attached to the endotracheal tube is attached to the inner tube and valve is closed, air is blown. If leak is present, excursions will be seen in the reservoir bag. Occlude both the limb and the patient. So, both the limb and the patient uh, connection with the APL valve open. And squeeze the bag, any leak is confirmed by a release of gas from the APL valve. So, both the, the patient end and the limb, uh, the limb are occluded, and patient connection with APL valve is open, and that should be squeezed. Now, coming to your Maples in B system.
The circuit functions similarly during both spontaneous and controlled ventilation. The fresh gas flow should be twice the minute volume, which is a very high amount of fresh gas flow. It is used for both spontaneous and controlled. So in this, the, fresh, the, the reservoir bag is kept very as the patient exhales. So when the patient is so with this, as the patient is exhaling, uh, the gas will pass down the corrugated tubing uh, along with fresh gas. At the end of exhalation, the tubing near the patient will be filled with this tubing here near the patient will be filled with fresh gas flow and alveolar gas. And alveolar gas. When the bag reaches full capacity, AV, APL valve will open and both fresh gas and alveolar gas will exit. When the patient begins to exhale, inspire the APL valve closes and the patient inhales fresh gas from the tubing we inhale from the bag if the volume of the tubing exceeds the tidal volume during control ventilation it behaves similar to Maples and A. Now Maples is also called as Westminster face piece Fresh gas flow is twice the minute ventilation for both spontaneous and controlled. It is used for short periods during transportation of the for short periods during transportation of patient. Here also in Maples in uh, C, basically uh, it is that there is no corrugated. It is similar to Maples in B, but there is no corrugated tubing occluded with the finger for a small syringe at the patient end while observing the flow meter. The inner tube, if the inner tube is intact, the indicator should dip. Pathics test. High flow of oxygen is first passed into the circuit while the patient end is occluded so that the bag completely fills. APL valve should be closed. The patient end is opened and simultaneously oxygen flush is activated. So, now open the patient end, activate flush. If the inner tube is intact, the venturi effect occurring at the patient end causes a decreased pressure within the circuit and the reservoir of your back should collapse. So this is difficult for you all to understand unless you all see it practically. But just remember, for testing the vein circuit, the pethics test. This is the name of the test. Naples in E, it is a modification of air spring piece used Initially for pediatric patients, there is no reservoir bag undergoing palate repair and intracranial surgery. The uh, advantages are minimal dead space, no valves, very little resistance. Volume of the expiratory limb should be more than the patient's tidal volume to prevent air dilution. So it is used in neonate and children weighing 20 to 30 kg. Sampling port is between the expiratory and port and the tubing. So that is where the fresh gas between the expiratory port and the tubing fresh gas flow is more than three times minute volume problems with this system are air dilution of the expiratory limb the expiratory limb is very short high fresh gas flow is required to prevent rebreathing waste of fresh gas during controlled ventilation the feel of the bag is not same barotrauma is highly possible it's not good for controlled ve ventilation and it is used to administer oxygen for spontaneously breathing patients in ICU. This is Maples in F is your Jackson Reese. It is T-piece arrangement with a reservoir bag. The relief mechanism is either an adjustable APL, adjustable valve at the end or a hole at the side of the bag. Newer modification incorporates an APL valve. Pressure relief is Activated to 30 cm of water. So fresh gas flow 2 to 3 minute uh, times a minute ventilation for spontaneous respiration and uh, fresh gas flow veins for controlled respiration. It is lightweight, has a simple construction, it is inexpensive, minimal resistance, minimal dead space, controlled ventilation is easily done, scavenging is facilitated. Hazards are there is no humidification, needs very high fresh gas flows, occlusion of relief valve can cause barotrauma. So this is a basic uh, overview of the various 
circuits. So as you can see for spontaneous ventilation here, it, the, the fresh gas flow should be equal to the minute ventilation which is around 80 which is very less as compared to everything else which is 2 to 3 times a minute ventilation. That is a high wastage of fresh gas flow whereas during your for controlled ventilation it is very difficult to predict the fresh gas flow. This has a reach only 1 to 2 times a minute ventilation. Everything else see. 2 to 2 and a half, 2 to 2 and a half. This is only 1 to 2 times a minute ventilation. Advantages of Maple system are the equipment is simple, inexpensive. Components can be easily disassembled and sterilized. It uh, provides a buffering effect so that variations in minute volume and ETCO2 can be seen. Free breathing will result in retention of heat and moisture. And resistance uh, is within the recommended ranges. Lightweight, not bulky, no excessive drag on the endotracheal tube, easy to position, uh, compression and compliance losses are less, changes in fresh gas concentration are better appreciated. Disadvantages are high fresh gas flows are required, there is a lot of wastage, uh, there is a lot of change of fresh gas flow from spontaneous to control, then uh, Anything, if there is a decreased fresh gas flow, there can be dangerous rebreathing. Uh, in in a, Maples in ABC, the APL valve is too close to the patient and may be inaccessible when it is all covered with surgical drapes. Maples in E and F are difficult to scavenge, and these are not suitable for patients with malignant hypothermia because it may not be possible to increase fresh gas flow. So that's it, guys, for today. That was class on breathing systems so please use my code SASHA to avail a 10% discount